This is BBC World News Today with me, Zainab Badawi, coming to you from the UN headquarters in New York. Global poverty and disarmament, just two big issues that world leaders are grappling with. First to speak was President Obama. He urged countries to put aside their cynicism and support his Middle East peace efforts. Now is the time to build the trust and provide the time for substantial progress to be made. Now is the time for this opportunity to be seized. Fears of a looming food crisis as the UN prepares to discuss rising food prices will have a special report on the new cash crop for US farmers. Also on this programme, India tries to restore its damaged reputation over the shocking conditions awaiting Commonwealth Games athletes in Delhi. And France grinds to a halt for the second time this month as hundreds of thousands of workers demonstrate at plans to raise the retirement age. Hello and welcome to a hot and sticky New York, where behind me at UN headquarters, world leaders have been gathering for their annual rituals at the General Assembly. It's a chance for heads of state to grab the limelight on the world stage. Well, today, security was even tighter than usual because it was President Obama who was addressing the General Assembly. And he focused on America's foreign policy objectives in particular the Middle East, and he urged the Arab nations and Israel to put aside their differences and come together for the sake of the Middle East peace process. Our diplomatic correspondent, Bridget Kendall, has this report. A hurried arrival at the United Nations. President Obama was late for his speech to world leaders. At the podium, his overriding concern, the current fragile Israeli-Palestinian peace negotiation prediction. It's time we should reach for what's best within ourselves. If we do, when we come back here next year, we can have an agreement that will lead to a new member of the United Nations, an independent, sovereign state of Palestine living in peace with Israel. A ripple of applause, but there's a specter of wider Middle East turbulence that America fears, the danger of Iran acquiring nuclear weapons. So Mr. Obama also had a message for the Iranian leadership. The door remains open to diplomacy should Iran choose to walk through it. But the Iranian government must demonstrate a clear and credible commitment and confirm to the world the peaceful intent of its nuclear program. Not that President Ahmadinejad was in the hall to hear that. Grinning broadly, he pointedly walked into the building some 30 minutes later. A leader with the dubious honor of being enemy number one at the minute, the target of bus shelter posters and angry street protests. What worries Western politicians is that he'll resist both offers of talks and pressure from tightening sanctions, pushing everyone towards a dangerous new confrontation. I think the single biggest risk is that Iran miscalculates. President Obama, he's made every effort to find a way through, you know, so I think they should pay attention to that and realize he has done that, in a sense, in order to say to them, I've tried my hardest with you. Here at the United Nations, there's definitely a renewed effort to get diplomacy with Iran going. And a huge determination by President Obama to get a breakthrough on Middle East peace negotiations. Bold ambitions, high stakes. Making it reality will be much more difficult. Bridget Kendall, BBC News at the United Nations. Well, joining me here is the veteran UN watcher, Warren Hoag. He's now vice president of the International Peace Institute. That's a think tank based here in New York. Warren Hoag, thank you for coming through the crowds and uh, battling your way here. Great to see you. Good to see you, Warren. So, President Obama focusing on the Middle East. Um, how did his speech go down? Because you were listening to it. Well, what I was watching it was that the Israelis did not attend. And you know, at these gatherings, the cameras always focus on people who were being talked about. So every time uh, Obama brought up the Middle East, they showed these empty seats. The Palestinians were there. Mahmoud Abbas was 
there. And so I think it will cause quite a commotion, the fact That's that the Israeli snub, though, chose not it? to be. It is quite, quite a, a snub. snub. For Barack Obama. What's the thinking then of the and Israeli's in, in, actions? Well, in domestic politics, it's been difficult for, in American domestic politics, difficult for Obama because is, is, we're a strong supporter of Israel here in this country. And some people have faulted him for being too tough on the Israelis. He said today at the United Nations that he hoped they would extend the moratorium, which is going to be a very difficult decision for Prime Minister Netanyahu. To say that at the UN is rather a risky thing. And then to have the Israelis basically boycotting the session, uh, it looks terrible. But what's the thinking then for the Israelis at this sort of calculated diplomatic snub? I mean, how did they, how did they present it? I don't know. I was surprised. Um, there is the Jewish holiday today, but it's not a major holiday. It's a holiday called Sukkoth, and, and people wouldn't usually take that as an occasion not to come to the United Nations. All right. And Warren also in his speech, Barack Obama extends the hand, says the door is open to Iran on negotiations to uh, the standoff with the international community. Um, I mean, Iran has actually been going around the American media saying uh, we are looking for a kind of negotiated settlement. Well, this is the fourth or fifth year that Ahmadinejad has done that and it's quite a public relations campaign. Uh, remember, the United Nations has just passed in the past year its fourth set of sanctions against Iran. Iran is not popular here. Um, Obama extended the hand once again, but also said they must be held accountable. And that's rather a sympathetic argument to most people. Iran enjoys very little support at the United Nations. Okay, and, and what is Barack Obama's kind of attitude to the United Nations? Because after George Bush, he he came in with these multilateral credentials and said, you know, he wanted to work with the rest of the world. I mean, by and large, is he seen in that light here? Uh, Obama is more popular at the United Nations than he is in the United States right now. Um, he's popular here because of what you just said. He's not George Bush. He has talked about multilateralism, which is a magic word here at the United Nations. He restored U.S. funding this year, which is very important important to the United Nations. He also put the United States back on the Human Rights Council, which it had boycotted before. So his reception here is always a good one, and he is seen as a president um, who really believes in associations with the world, and that's a popular stance for an American so president. And over, it's been much missed here in recent years. And he's not over preoccupied with those midterm elections in November? He is preoccupied with those, but that didn't really affect much of what he said today. As a matter of fact, his being tough on the Israelis is not popular uh, in this country and will not serve him well in the midterm election. All right, Warren Hope, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. you can get in the shade now. <laughs> <laughs> well, apart from topics like Iran and the Middle East peace process, one big theme of this UN summit has been the Millennium Development Goals. Now,